It is 22 minutes past seven. Did the election result prove finally that newspapers no longer influence elections? The Mail and the Sun in particular were fantastically hostile to Jeremy Corbyn in the run-up to the vote. In the old days, well, that would have mattered. Remember, it was the Sun what won it in 1992. But now, well, perhaps not so much. Kerry Ann Mendoza is on the line, who's editor-in-chief of The Canary, which is the Jeremy Corbyn's supporting website. And uh, Neil Wallace as well, former deputy editor of The Sun, former executive editor of the News of the World. Morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Kerry Ann Mendoza, do you, th- do you think things have changed? Um, yes, and I, but I don't think anything has changed in the media or in terms of the media's attempted influence on the majority of people. I think the big change here is now they've got competition. They've got competition in the form of the Canary and a whole fleet of new media sites like Evolve Politics and Other Angry Voice um, who have been working really, really hard over a number of years to develop a space in this country where we could have conversations that were not happening in the mainstream media. And these are progressive conversations. You know, the Sun and the Daily Mail space and every day trying to sow hate and division, divide people by ethnicity, by class, by whether you're in work or out of work. And there's a whole groundswell of people who are just looking for a kinder world, a more compassionate country, and to bring people together around common ideals and values. And, I suppose and, that, the- and we've been doing that work. And what's so exciting about this period of time is that when you know we've spent seven years under a you know various forms of conservative government which was just sucking the life and energy out of people and throughout that entire time it wasn't like anybody didn't know that things were going very, very wrong in the country, but there was an right. absence of hope. What we've delivered let's, let's, is Let's put that hope. to Neil Wallace. I mean, the central point, Neil Wallace, is, is that people have enjoyed and list, um, watched and listened to and taken notice of uh, websites like The Canary. They have taken much less notice this time round of The Sun and The Mail. Hello, Neil, are you there? Um, <clears throat> I think that that's... Yes, hello. Yes, hi, sorry, there was a long delay on the line. Carry on. Hello. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, the, I, Leslie, I'm in the sense that the, the, they are competent. I think that is absolutely true. What we've seen is that um, new media, social media, has become competition to what you might call the mainstream media. But the vital thing is, the vital thing is, is, is that that new media talks to the new voter. And what this has really been about is about the youth vote. And <clears throat> where does the youth vote go to get its news and influence? It goes, to, if you like, to new media, to social media, and much less to the traditional media. It's about the fact that young people... No, I think we're we're oh, losing dear. the line. Well, you made you made you with, with the the point that he was making, Karen Mendes. Yeah. In a sense, it's not it's not the politics. It's it's the it's the place. It's the <laughs> place that people go for their news. That's what matters now. I think the the sort of political class and the, and the media establishment would be making a really big mistake um, if they went that route. Um, you know, BuzzFeed is online. The Mail is online. All of these places are online. And in the run up to this election, you know the the Canary website, not our Facebook page, the website reached, you know, 25 million hits. We outperformed Reuters, The Economist, New Statesman, The Spectator, even Rupert Murdoch's The Times for online traffic. And that wasn't because we have a website. They have a website. You know, we, we have no money. They have billions of pounds. But you're also partisan. So any- I mean, that, that's the other point, isn't it? Is that you're, you're proudly partisan, just as those papers are proudly partisan. You might say you're right and they're wrong. But the fact is, people are still going to a partisan place for their news, but it's just a different place. Um, it's a re- it's really, really valid point that you're making. And the whole point that we exist is because there is a massive gap. You call it partisan. We've been accused since we set up of being in an echo chamber. So all of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters. And what we're saying is, sorry, chaps, but you're the echo chamber. You know, we are an incredibly diverse newsroom, you know, in terms of age, in terms of background, all religions and none. We're based all over the country instead of just in Westminster. And that has allowed us to be much closer to communities all across the country to see what's actually happening house by house, street by street. What do you and reckon? I mean, since Neil Wallace, we've lost Neil Wallace, we just couldn't get through to him on the, on the FaceTime line. But what would you reckon to the argument that I think he might make that actually, although they claimed it in the past, the newspapers weren't really having an, an effect on people. What they were doing was channeling a sense mm. of what should happen that was already out there in the country. And perhaps you're doing the same today. 
I think the power of the media to shape our view of ourselves, each other, and the kind of world that we can and that we want to build together is absolutely enormous. That cannot be underplayed because stories are everything. You know, what we think is possible does determine what we then do. I think the difference that we've been able to make in this election, and, and it wasn't just us, this is a whole fleet of new media sites, was say to people, there's hope. You're not alone. You are not mad. You know, there are a lot of other people who also feel that this country has become a cold and cruel place and right. we need to take better care of each other. Well, um, and it won the day. Kerry Ann Mendez, uh, thank you very much. And Neil Wallace as well. Thank you to, to you and apologies. We couldn't manage to get through to him in the end. 28 minutes past seven, Gary Sport. John Justin, good morning. Andy Murray says he's proud.